Good morning, Weasel. How you doing, bud? I'm good, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. We're good. We're here uh, in South Dakota. South Dakota at a coffee time truck stop. So I didn't film anything yesterday. Uh, for me, yesterday was the day after our whole federal election, which we won't get into here. Uh, I just took a day off of filming. So you didn't miss much, don't worry. Uh, pretty much all I did yesterday was I spent, uh, I spent uh, all day pretty much picking up this load that I have behind me. It's a load of OSB board. I had to tarp it. In the cold wind, it took, yeah, most of the day. <laughs> and I'm taking it down to Lincoln, Nebraska. So we made it down here to South Dakota. We gotta go the rest of the way. Oh, excuse me, about six hours down to Lincoln. And uh, from there we go over to St. Joseph, Missouri. We pick up some steel and we head over to the great and the beautiful Alberta. Gotta deliver that steel to Calgary, Alberta. Somebody over there needs steel from over here. So we're the people to bring it to them. And it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a little bit of new scenery also from Missouri to Alberta, because we're, we're taking a different route again than we than we usually do. Similar to that route we took a few, what was it, about a month ago? Where we went and saw that massive big truck stop there in Nebraska, uh, through Montana and all those states over there. It's gonna be fun. So it's been uh, an interesting couple of days. But we're ready to get back to trucking and exploring our continent here. We live in a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. And one of the most favorite parts to me of my job, or one of my most favorite parts, sorry, I'm still waking up. My English isn't good yet. One of my favorite parts of the job is exploring and seeing everything. Because, you know, you can hear about it, you can learn about it, but once you see it, you really see it, feel it, experience it. It gives you a whole new appreciation for for the land that we live, that we live in. Both Canada and the United States. I, I live in Canada, but uh, you know, technically I live a lot of my life in the US. I'm just not a citizen here. But uh, they are kind enough to allow me to come and visit quite often. So I'm down here almost as much as I am up there. Great people down here. I love visiting the United States. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my coffee. Here, I'll show you the load here real quick before we go. And, uh, We'll head on down the road. All right, let's go and take a look at this here. Let's go and take a look at this here. So there's my load. It's like a brick wall that I'm pulling. My, I don't know why they stack it so high. They could stack it lower and use the whole trailer, but they decide to stack it up like that in the center of the trailer, and it acts like a huge parachute behind me, and I use a lot more fuel because it catches so much wind, right? That tarp, it was so windy. I was lucky enough to have uh, another driver who was tarping there help me out a little bit. That's the, oh, oops. Looks like I'm gonna have to grab another bungee. Yeah, bungee that in there, that's supposed to be in there. Okay, well, I'm gonna complete my pre-trip here and everything, gonna continue doing what I gotta do. We'll get back on the road. just keeps on going. 
I don't remember such a, a wet autumn or wet fall before. I mean, I know we had a lot of snow and rain the year, uh, oh, no, end of 96, because we had the flood of the century in 97, right? But I wonder what next spring is going to be like, because the rivers up in Manitoba, all the water from here flows pretty much into the Red River of the north, right? Just off to our left. And that all flows up north to Canada. It's the only river in North America that flows north. It goes into Lake Winnipeg, and from there it drains into the Hudson's Bay. But all this water here, a lot of it anyways, not all of it, but a lot of it goes up to Canada, up to Manitoba where I'm from, and our rivers up there are pretty high. I think uh, I just read an article this morning saying that the Red River in Manitoba is about ready to uh, uh, rise over the banks. I think it's crest is what they call it, right? And that's at fall time. we got to get a whole winter of snow in yet. And that's all about a melt in spring, so it'll make for a very interesting spring next year. I'm glad we're kind of up on higher ground. We don't really have to worry about flooding much, and we don't have a basement either. We just have a crawl space, so the water would have to be exceptionally high, and most of Manitoba would have to be underwater before our floorboards would even start to get a little wet. But uh, there's a lot of people who live in what we call the flood basin around the Red River. Uh, up around, you know, St. Agath, south of Winnipeg. Because the floodgates go up and Winnipeg gets protected. We built a, a massive floodway that takes water around the city. But they saved the city at the expense of the small towns and agricultural communities south of Winnipeg. So whenever they put those floodgates up, essentially what it is, it's, it's, it's a dam. It dams the river so it goes over and spills into the floodway. But that means uh, all those towns flood there. So I, I don't know what it would be like, but having to worry about flooding every year. I just remember sandbagging in 97, and that was a crazy flood that year. But yeah, we're here in South Dakota still. This is the scenery today. What do you guys think of it? It's nice, isn't it? South Dakota. Great places, great faces. Or is it great faces, great places? One of those, one of those. South Dakota. So I've been running as hard as the law will allow me today. I thought that I had to get to St. Joseph by end of day, by end of business day, to pick up my load. Turns out the load's actually on a preloaded trailer. And uh, that trailer's gonna be waiting there for me, and I can pick it up any time of day, 24 hours a day. They'll leave the paperwork where I can find it. I can just go hook on, tie it down, and get going whenever I get there. So uh, that is awesome. I like shippers like that, you know? But not every shipper has preloaded trailers. Like, in order for us to have preloaded trailers there, somebody's got to bring them a bunch of our empty trailers. And then we can get a cycle going, right? Because then they load our trailer, park it in their yard. I show up with an empty trailer, leave my empty trailer, take the loaded trailer, and then they put, you know, it's a cycle then. So not every shipper's like that, but this one's really nice. I talked to them in the office there, and they were, they were super nice, in good mood. So uh, they go home at 2 o'clock must be nice however I can pick my load up 24 hours a day don't matter so they know I'm gonna be there late tonight I'll I'm gonna get to my my receiver for this OSB board around like 4 o'clock they go home at 5 so we're gonna, gonna get there just in the nick of time and then I got about three hours to get to st. Joseph uh, eight. I'll probably be in st. Joseph like around between 8 and 9 tonight I'll probably be there for a couple of hours tying it down, and then I will just go a little ways down the road and go to bed somewhere. But we got to be in Calgary for next Monday, and I'm filming this on Wednesday. We've got lots of time. It's only a two and a half day drive, so Wednesday I'll get loaded, tied down, and then tomorrow we'll start. So we've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We've got four days to go, two and a half days of driving. Does that make sense? So I can take my time. That's good. No rush. Omaha. Omaha. How many of you are from Omaha? How many of you have been to Omaha? Never actually been in the city. It's actually a pretty big city. There's a TD bank over there. That's a Canadian bank. Oh, would you look at that? It's a pretty big building too. TD. I didn't know we did. We had banks down here. I knew TD was in the US, but it's kind of weird though, right? What, what would a Canadian bank be doing in the U.S.? 
or maybe it's a US bank just but it's just called the Toronto Dominion Bank what do I know what do I know I know that I'd love to explore the city There's so much to see you know all I get to see is like sights from the freeway I never get to actually explore that often So I'm going to be turning uh, off onto Interstate 80 in three here. Kilometers. Keep to the right on I 80 West. In three kilometers. So I'm going to have to get into the right lanes there. Uh, he wants to get into the left lane. I want to get into the right lane. Okay. He didn't see my signal. My signal was on first. Okay. Well, at least he let me in now. It always bothers me when you put your signal on and then someone, you know, backs off to give you room to move over and then someone else from the other lane on the other side moves in and takes the spot that was made for you. Doesn't that annoy you? <laughs> so it's quite a bit warmer here already. And look at the trees. The trees have barely even started changing color here. Just a little bit. Truck must check in before entering gate. Uh, so you want me to check in here? I don't want to block the gate though, so I'm gonna go. Yeah, it says do not block gate. Okay, well I'm gonna go and park over here off to the side then. Then go in and check in. Good thing looks like there's nobody else here, so it's just me. They claim I can get around here. So we're empty. It's uh, about five o'clock. Took just, just about an hour to get all untarped and cleaned up and unloaded. Just like I thought. Always getting better at estimating how long things will take. Oh yeah, we can make it around, no problem. So yeah, now we're on our way to St. Joseph. We gotta pick up that steel load and we're not gonna be able to take the scenic route through Montana, unfortunately. Apparently I have to cross at uh, Emerson, Manitoba. So, uh, goody for me, eh? <laughs> I guess we'll head up that way. Not very scenic, but I'm just gonna wait for this forklift guy to do whatever it is he's doing there that I don't have to crowd him too much getting around this corner. I think he just took the, the wrapper off of that lumber piece. That wood came from uh, British Columbia in Canada. Oh, he's gonna leave room for me. Okay. There we go. Much easier that way. Some of these yards that we deliver to are so tight and so so narrow. But it works. As long as everything is kept neat and in order, it works. So we've got about two and a half hours to St. Joseph now. And then to tie that down, that'll probably take me about three hours there. Unless if I like hurry, it might be two hours, but I usually take my time with those loads because I go overboard. I like to make sh double sure it's not gonna shift any which way, as anyone should, but you know, I go a little overboard. I I'd, I'd rather have way too much securement than a little not enough. You know what I mean, right? I don't know what I'm saying. Off we go on the next adventure. Well, well, at the border of Nebraska and Iowa here, they got something going on. One, two, three, four, five cranes. I wonder how they don't all hit each other. <laughs> They're all so close together. <laughs> sort of whacking each other, they can start having crane fights. Sort of like sword fights with cranes. Look at this. I wonder which one would win. A whole bunch of them. They're obviously building a new bridge here. Probably gonna be pretty cool and pretty nice once it's done. 
We're just going over the border here and we're stopping at the pilot. We gotta grab some fuel again. Keep needing that fuel. We grab the fuel and uh, some DEF fluid, diesel exhaust fluid. I think you guys in Europe call it AdBlue. What do you guys call it in Australia? AdBlue, DEF, you guys got some something else for it? Oh boy, they had to tear down a couple of really big trees to build this bridge, that's too bad. I really wish that when we would develop, we would sort of try to leave up as many trees as possible. But it seems a lot of the time when we develop, they go into the, the land and they, they just clear the entire land from corner to corner to corner. You know, they're just everything cleared right down. They take down every single tree and everything. I'm, again, I'm not a tree hugger, but I'm also, uh, I also don't hate trees. I like them. They take a long time to grow, but now yeah, well, I guess I was just, I was seeing a, a development. I went for a walk the other day and I saw this new development. Kilometers. Excuse me. Huh? I, I saw this new development anyways, this new commercial building coming up and it, it was a forested lot. And what they could have done is just cleared enough trees for their business and they could have had a nice treed in business. It would have looked really nice, right? But no, 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 no. They took this whole like, quarter of a square mile and just cleared everything and then they just chewed up all the trees into sawdust and wood chips i guess they sold those and at least they'll go to use somewhere but yeah, it was sad for me to see I was like, well, you didn't need to knock them all down yeah, you could have just you know knocked down a few of them whatever whatever i'm like right in the middle we need to keep developing so that i have work to do i need to bring people steel so that they build stuff i want them to keep building things but don't be wasteful like Leave the trees. I'm very protective over the trees on our property. <laughs> Hydro, our electric company. Turn left on 210th Avenue and then turn left in 220 meters. Thanks, thanks, Karen. Always wants to be involved. Uh, our electric company, uh, Manitoba Hydro, they tried to uh, reroute our hydro on our property. And I, I told you about this, right? And they wanted to cut down a whole pile of our trees and it caused a big stink and I forced them to go underground protecting my trees. In that case, I was a tree hugger. <laughs> Those are my trees, specifically. Look at this, wow, this is just barely big enough to fit through here. All right, so pilot's off on the left here. Let's grab fuel and uh, go get our steel. Just rolling into St. Joseph here. This is a pretty cool, <laughs> Cook pretty cool bridge One at night. Kilometer, keep to the right on US 36 West MO 759 Airport and then go straight in 440 meters. Karen, you bring me into this place different every time. I don't remember going over this bridge. So you got one direction going one way above us and then our direction going this way beneath them. In 500 meters, keep to the right on US 36 West MO 759 Airport and then go straight in 440 meters. Huh? Slow down, woman, I can't hear what you're saying. Just a simple man, you gotta give me like simple directions. Go straight. Keep right ahead. That's all you need to tell me. You don't need to tell me all that other stuff. Meters. Here she goes Go again. straight on South 4th Street, MO 759. In one kilometer, take US 59 South Atchison Street and then keep to the right in 290 meters. All right then. I don't remember coming in this way. Like we're going like right past downtown St. Joseph. What in the hunt? What are we doing here? Karen! What are you doing to me? Meters, take US 59 South Atchison Street and then keep to the right in 290 meters. Okay, see so all you had to do was say, okay, next exit, 4A, turn right. Oh, you're dinging at me, you too. You don't trust me to listen to you, do you? Probably because I don't listen most of the time. I just tune her out, like a good man. In 200 meters, keep to the right on US 59 6th Street. This is definitely a different route. I don't remember this at all. I don't I haven't been to this shipper in a month or two. So, I don't know. And it's nighttime rolling into town here, so... Well, it might just be me. It might just be me. Oh, 
okay, this is looking more familiar now. Sorry guys, I didn't realize it. Slide right on. Blake Avenue, US 59. Karen, you have to interrupt me all the time. I just realized you guys have got some bugs in your uh, your line of sight there. I didn't realize that. Okay, what? Well, turn right here, right? Right, 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 right. Here, green arrow pointing right. This way. Very often I've gone the wrong way. Slide right on Alabama Street, MOU. Alabama Street? Huh? Alabama. Oh, okay, let's 30 miles now. Okay, good. I was going 30. <laughs> yeah, this looks familiar now. Now I know where we are. Because this shipper's in an old part of St. Joseph, right? So all these buildings are very old and uh, probably from the, uh, a lot of them from the 19th century, early 20th century. You know, one of these neighborhoods that I always like to show you and talk about, you know, the good old days. Back in the good old days in the 1800s and early 1900s. Before everything got weird and crazy. Like, wow. Especially as of late, the world's just gotten really weird, hasn't it? Oh, what have we done? I still got that big bug right in front of my camera. Why, why, are you, why is that bug right there? Right there. How dare you? How dare you? You've stolen my childhood and my dreams with your bug guts. I'm trying to show the good people where we are. Wait, don't I want to turn there? Oh, that wasn't good. Okay. I think I know where I am. How's that? Is that better? This uh, bug deflector that I uh, installed it doesn't catch all the bugs. It catches a lot of them, not all of them. So this is my next load, and check this out. Steel is painted white this time instead of that regular gray. And there's there's a, a strap here already for me. Why is there a strap? It's not our strap. This is the right trailer, right? Yeah, it's definitely my trailer. Check this out, it's gonna be so easy to tie this down. Look at this, is there anything back here? Oh, it's a little bit. Okay, yeah, you got a little bit of a little bit of something something back here yet i'm just gonna put my tarps on top of those and uh, that'll hold that down look at that other than that it's just one cluster usually it's way higher usually it's all the way to the back here i'll be out of here in less than 45 minutes okay i'll give myself an hour because i'm gonna take my time because i'm in no rush i'm just gonna tie this down and go down the road find a good place to park and uh That'll be that. I'm, I'm calling it a night after this, so I take my time, do a good job, make sure it's all tied down because you gotta make sure, like all these little pieces in the center, you have to make sure that each piece is tight and it's got friction that's gonna hold it in place. It's not gonna rattle loose and come out the back, right? And like these things back here, like this, the reason I said I'm gonna put my tarps on this here is because of these center pieces in the middle, right? I can put a strap or straps right over it. I have to put corner protectors on there and tie it down real tight, but you never know these middle ones, they might rattle forward or back. You have to slam on the brakes or something, you don't want that. So I'm gonna put my tarps on top of this, then tie my tarps down tight on top of them. That way, everything has got a lot of friction and nothing's going to move. Yeah, that's that's my load. That, that piece up there looks kind of crooked though. Eh? Sometimes they load this stuff a little wonky. Like that, you see that load there? That's what I'm used to. Usually when I pick up stuff here, this is what I'm looking at. Look at this chaos and this place my the other place i pick up steel in evansville wisconsin that place puts those ropes through remember they put the ropes through so that you can pull your straps through this place doesn't even do that and you're not allowed to climb on the trailer deck here you can get kicked out of the yard and you can't pick up here anymore so you can't put any straps through the center of this or through the middle of this but you're supposed to you know tie this all of this all the way down uh, legally that's not possible you have to have straps going through the center so what they make you do is they t you tie it down the best you can just going over the top without getting on the trailer and then you leave here you go to a, a truck stop or something down the road somewhere where you can park then you climb up there and you put the straps through the middle it's dumb right but yeah that that's a big load I'm glad that's not mine I'm really really glad that that's not mine this is mine 
much better. Much, much better. Let's get to work. I usually walk around it once or twice or a couple, a couple times just to get a good look at it, get a good feel for it, you know? Gotta feel my freight. Gotta feel it in my bones. Gotta know what I'm gonna do with it, right? How do I make this freight mine? My freight. You're not going anywhere. I'm gonna tie you down tight. We're going for a ride. I'm taking you all for a ride. You two little guys here, I'm not gonna forget you, don't worry. I'm taking you with me. We're all going for a ride up to Western Canada. 